last few years I have been using field monitors. Now the size of these can be 11, 7 or even smaller. The larger monitors I have but I did want a smaller monitor that I could attach to my camcorder and or DSLR camera. After doing some research online, checking through eBay and Amazon, then finally going to YouTube, the size of monitor that I wanted was a 5.5 touchscreen monitor that did support 4K. Now there was a company called Feel World that had these monitors on eBay, so I ordered one. I will leave a link in the description below where I got mine from. The manual itself was in pretty good English. It covered everything that you needed to know and had quite enough information to get a raw beginner going. The monitor itself, the casing is approximately three quarters of an inch in thickness. So all the in and out ports, SD card and connections to the quarter 20 were easily fitted on the outer edges. In the box you will find a sunshade. Now the sunshade comes in two parts. The first part is the frame that fits onto the main body of the camera and the second part is the sunshade itself. This is held on using Velcro. The lightweight connecting arm that connects the monitor to the camera via the cold shirt is made from strong aviation alloy. The only lead that you are provided with is a normal HDMI to micro HDMI lead. Normally you are provided with these HDMI leads with your cameras so you may have to use your own. The viewable screen size is 5.5 inches. On the bottom of the monitor is the SD card slot, a DC 12 volt in, a quarter 20 and a headphone jack. On the left side you'll find the HDMI in and out, also a DC out 8 volts for cameras. On the top is the on off and touch control button, another quarter 20 and a menu scroll button. It was nice to see that you could power the monitor by a normal 12 volt DC supply. Also on the back was the F970 and E6 dual purpose battery plate. Before using the monitor for the first time you will need to remove the screen protector. Because of using other monitors and other equipment that use similar batteries, in this case the NPF 550, these are a pretty common battery but if you didn't buy any batteries with your monitor and you do not have any, you will have to provide your own. It was nice to see that there was a push release button to remove the battery. There's no fear of the batteries falling off now when in use. There are three places on the monitor where the mounting arm can be fitted. These have quarter 20 holes. These are on the top, side and bottom. If you look carefully on the connecting arm quarter screw that screws onto the monitor, there are two locator pins. These are there to help keep the arm and monitor together when rotating the monitor so the quarter 20 pin does not undo or move when rotating the monitor, tilting it up or down. There are a number of different options to mount the monitor. In this case, we're using the hot shoe on the camera. The monitor can be used facing forward or backwards, depending upon your requirements. To switch on the monitor, simply press and hold the power button. Although the manual is only in English, when you power on the monitor, it will, for the first time, start up in Chinese. To set it to English, select the second option down, rotate the wheel until English appears and push down on the wheel, which is a switch as well, to select the language. Everything from now on will be in English in all the menus and submenus. As I mentioned earlier, the only lead that is provided with this monitor is one that goes from a normal HDMI to a micro HDMI. This will fit mainly Sony cameras. In this case, I'm using the Canon, so I've used a Canon lead that was provided with my camera. With the monitor switched on and the plug plugged into your camera and the monitor, switch on your camera and the image should appear as shown. You do have a lot of control by using the touch screen, the brightness, the volume and double tapping on the screen will bring up the menus. There is only a very small amount of 
of lag. Nothing that would be of any worry to anybody. When you use the camera for the first time, the brightness is normally set at 50%. And as you can see, even at 50%, it is quite bright. But you need to turn that up if you do go outside. If you want to fit the sunshade, then simply fit the frame to the main body of the monitor first. Then put the sunshade on using the Velcro. It will hold in place very securely. To try and keep the video as short as possible, I will not be going through all the different settings that this monitor will give you. There are many videos on YouTube showing you how to do this, and a lot of them are very good indeed, well worth a search and watch. If you do want to see and go through all the specifications, I will put them in the description below. The only small criticism I have about the monitor is the screen is very reflective, very shiny. That would have been nice to have been matte. I have used the monitor on a few occasions now and I must say I've been very pleased with it. I hope you found this information of use to you. Thank you for watching.